Well, that's a big jump. That's yeah, a big jump 30, from what it, where it yeah. was basically. You, you have yeah. to go by that big jump is telling you something. Whereas if you have raised creatinine and I say it's 1.2 and then the next set of bloods was 1.22, but you're yeah. on mm-hmm. you're on creatine, you have excessive muscle mass, etc. Uh, I wonder where a classic is going to go now, now that um, uh, Mike Sommerfeld is kind of in the lead. I mean, it's such a different physique. It's like, it's it's bodybuilding. Mike Sommerfeld is a bodybuilder, uh, you know, but he's got how, the, those classic lines. I mean, if if you take the face away, you know, it looks very close to Dorian Yates. I don't know that, how he's so big at that weight. Again, he must have a super small frame. Yes, tiny waist. He's a tiny waist. And he, he knows how to diet with Neil Hill. So, uh, I yeah, mean, he, wants to, he wanted to go to Bali and he wanted to come to Thailand. And I told him, don't do it, man. You'll, you'll, why sacrifice your place <laughs> if you're coming here? You have way too much fun. <laughs> yeah, I told him, so just lock yourself somewhere in Dubai or Mexico where you have access to all the stuff. Like here in Thailand, they have access to everything also. But I told him, said, there's too much distractions here. You'll, you'll go nuts. Mm. It's, uh, so hopefully he can win the Mr. Olympia. And then when he retires, he can come to Thailand or Bali and enjoy himself. Um, cause you know, four or five years at the Olympia stage, I think then it's time to throw in the towel. This guy lives out of Airbnbs. Can you believe it? He looks like that. He has no home. He lives out of Airbnbs, goes to Mexico for six months and then four months in Dubai and travels all over the place. It's insane. Wow. Yeah. Good I wouldn't be able to do that, man. I go to Bali, I get fat and sloppy and you know, yeah, then again, I, he could do that. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's uh, yeah, the, the, the nomadic life. And then look like that. It's not many people can do that. No. Well, not many no. people could do that no matter what the environment was. So uh, I wouldn't be able to look like that even if I lock myself yeah, down in, in, in a home gym life. with a kitchen yeah. you know? <laughs> and a posing room. No way. I wouldn't be able to do it. Um, did you guys hear anything more about China and then the raw situation like Mastro and Prima Ball and it's now completely gone everywhere all the underground labs they don't have it there is um there's some trickling into the united states in mm-hmm. smaller i guess they don't it, it's it's looked at differently i guess depending on the size of the uh, container or whatever because okay. um, i heard that production is just very very low at yeah, the moment so deca deca supposedly is not being produced why deca <laughs> i don't know deca specifically not mpp um mm-hmm. mast e not mast p Mm-hmm. It's gone. Anavar supposedly as well gone. Yeah. Um, Mast E might not be. I think people are speculating because Americans use Mast E now. It's trendy, so they just cut that out. Mm-hmm. It there is there's some polymorphisms when Mastron's made. I don't know if you've seen this, Dean. There's like different isomers of drostenolone that occur mm-hmm. during the re- recrystallization process. Um, it carbon thirteen folds strangely, and so the molecule is different. So it's even though it tests as just standalone, it's, it's different. There's a hydrogen hydrogen interaction. It's possible that during the enanthate process, when they add that, that it causes that it might be much more difficult to make. Perhaps it requires more reducing or something. Cause when it's made, mm-hmm. I don't know if you've ever seen mast E made versus mast P when mast E is made, it turns jet black. It almost looks like, oh, you told us, thin, yeah. it looks mm-hmm. like thin motor oil versus mast P is like this really light yellow, like a beer. And Masti mm-hmm. next to it is black in the container. And then um, when it's filtered, a lot of times the black goes away, right? You've never seen black Masti in a bottle, but it's when it's cleaned up for processing, it goes away. So there's something else occurring. It's possible that they either they've, they've tried to cheapen the process and it didn't work, or I, I'm just speculating on a chemistry point of view. I don't know why Masti. Could this, could this isoform explain why some people get no? Estrogen suppression on mastron and could some be, people do. Could be different. Yeah. I can send you stuff on it if you want to read about it. Please. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So, yeah, it, it seems that like uh, all the underground labs that I talked to that are reputable, they say that it's, it's sourcing is really a problem. And then they're looking in India and none of them trust India producing for the raws. None of them. They say, fuck, uh, that, that's the last resort. You know, I'd rather not make anything than get my fucking raws from India. <laughs> That's hilarious. The UK is, is pretty much dried up. And, yeah. Uh, well, so dry- remember, guys, when we told you to stock up, <laughs> it took it took five I, months. <laughs> it, will, it will never go away. It took five it's, months, uh, but it's, uh, I, I had a few uh, consults where the question was proposed surrounding mast 
because Primo is next to impossible. And like you said, with um, Primo bowling, like even Rima bowling, there's a lot of mm-hmm. fakes and it's the, gone now. It's, yeah, it's not being produced anymore. To wound down a production, now you're you're left with limited choice. So we might see a renaissance of a. Uh, Test and Decker come back from the the eighties. <laughs> yeah, maybe Bolden on is making a comeback. You know, uh, well, we want some aromatase inhibiting effects. We want some estrogen lowering uh, effects, and 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 uh, still fullness and roundness and cosmetic benefits. So Test and Bolden on is uh, we're just going to discount all these studies on kidney problems. You know, then I mean, again, these it... kidney studies have never been reproduced in other steroids. So uh, Bolden on is kidney toxic. Lack of evidence in the other steroids doesn't mean that yeah. those steroids are not kidney toxic. It's just never been studied, guys. Yeah. I mean, like what Kurt said, it were the uh, creatinine of the client that we looked at the bloods. Mm. Um, creatinine, uh, if you're looking at bloods, like what you said, it's relatively a useless marker. Not to put anything down on it, but it's increased with creatine metabolism. And like we mm-hmm. see with the oral steroids, potentially your increase in creatine phosphate, which creates creatinine. When you see an increase in creatinine, the way I always view it is what is the baseline change? So like if, if that guy's creatinine was 1.3 and say that is with same standard diet, same standard cycle, same supplementation, creatine, protein powders, whatever. And then he goes and gets blood work and that baseline was say 1.01 and now it's at 1.3 well that's a big jump that's yeah, a big jump 30, from what it, where it yeah. was basically. you you have yeah. to go by that big jump is telling you something whereas if you have raised creatinine and i say it's 1.2 and then the next set of bloods was 1.22 but you're yeah. on mm-hmm. you're on creatine you have excessive muscle mass etc you got That's, stronger, you you put on some size, then it's, this is what happened to my, my blood work. Usually it jumps up like a couple of points. And that's and then, why... But with, you also get stronger. With the calculation of EGF-4, the, the Crocs-Fort gelt, as far as I remember, is what the normal... Yeah. It, yeah. it really doesn't take into account muscle mass. It's just looking at mm. uh, a standardized linear excretion of creatinine. Mm. That's why it's used. Um, mm. So in it. A normal individual, they sort of have an, an, a known rate of clearance of creatinine should be linear, basically. Um, but it's not as simple when you have someone who has, you know, 80 kilos of muscle mass in their frame and mm-hmm. they're training excessively the day before raising creatine kinase and creatine phosphate turnover and everything else. That That's where the cystatin C becomes more important. And then mm-hmm. looking at... Um, DJ4 using creatinine and cystatin C together. And yeah. it might be useful. You can put up on the screen. You can easily search for it. Creatinine is a tiny molecule. Cystatin C mm-hmm. is a big giant protein. You put them side by side, like pictorially. There's a huge difference between the structures that when you're measuring a small molecule's clearance and then a big protein that's part of the kidney. In the oh, bloodstream. it's only 113 uh, Daltons. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very small creatinine. You look at cystatin C, it's huge. You put the two side by side, like I said, you you get an understanding of why creatinine versus cystatin C. If your cystatin C is raised, that is what you need to really action quickly. Yes. Um, And then you can do... Oh calculations like there's several websites that will take into account your as much as i hate it your bmi will give a relative understanding of how much muscle mass is on your frame relative to your height so mm-hmm. you can then work out what's the kidney filtration based off that and it's more important to do that type of calculation because if you went to a hospital and you were given a intravenous drug they'd do I'll this they do this more uh advanced calculation because they want to be sure of drug clearance rates based on your your actual kidney health yeah so all the pictures that i find are um purchase pictures from stock image websites so i'll overlay that here if i don't forget <laughs> so it's 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 interesting it's a big difference it's yeah. huge let me see what the molecular weight is of um just that and see so let's see molecular weights 13 kilodaltons, so that's 113 daltons of, of creatinine, 
versus thirteen hundred or thirteen thousand. Yeah, that's yeah. a big difference, right? So, Single polypeptide chain of one hundred twenty amino acids. It's like growth hormone. It's massive. And, I, and what yeah. you're looking with the stat and see is how much of it is being released from the kidneys into your bloodstream as a reflection of kidney damage. Right. Um, and then the other thing, what you want to look at with bloods towards kidney health is where where is albumin changed? If albumin drops, yeah. mm -hmm. you're losing mm -hmm. it through the kidneys as well. So for serum, yeah, you can check that with the urinalysis and your protein, right? Do you have a protein one or trace plus one, plus two, plus three, and you can find those ranges. Of how much albumin is in your pro uh, in your urine, you know how many milligrams per liter, um, yeah, and then you need to get alarmed. And then otherwise, you do a twenty-four hour urine collection test, where you compare your serum creatinine to and and serum urine uh, serum cystatancy to your urinary creatinine and cystatancy. And then many times the real e, uh, GFR, so without the E, the E stands for estimated. The true glomerular filtration rate is it's in the hundreds. You know, it's like one hundred twenty-five. I've done these. 24 year urine collection test so many times and then your your EGFR on, on blood work is like 40. You're like, fuck, I'm going to die. And then you do it a 24 year urine collection test and then it's uh, 127. And you're like, oh, okay. It's totally fine then. You know? My my cystadency has never been out of range, but creatinine is pretty high. It's genetics. Have you guys ever noticed with clients that are on a high carbohydrate diet that their creatinine levels are generally lower than guys that follow a carnivore or ketogenic or more high carb or high protein diet with I mean, less makes sense. Yeah, you're using right. less protein as energy. Exactly. Yeah. So my creatinine is usually a little bit higher because my protein intake is higher. Mm -hmm. And then I have zero carbs, carbs to kind low. of compensate for that. Yeah, carbs are low. Um, so that's what I always yeah, notice that gluconeogenesis, that, you know. it just you're gonna excrete amino acids. Yeah. And then in, instead of um, you utilizing the carbohydrate for energy, you use the proteins. You know, yeah. So you got more and there's waste, right? Because it's gonna pull yeah, exactly. the, glucog the glucogenic amino acids out, and the rest are gonna become waste. Exactly, exactly.